And, uh, uh, I'm retired from Suncor Energy where I was the Executive Vice President of Natural Gas and Renewable Energy and before that uh, the CFO of, of Suncor as well. I'm alumni of, uh, of uh, the Haskane School of Business and also a member of the Management Advisory Committee. The first thing I think about integrated business thinking and decision making is around bringing all the tools and experience and, 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 and processes uh, to the table when you are making business decisions. If you take a look at some of the simpler uh, business decisions like let's say replacing a, a photocopier, you don't have to get too detailed. You know a simple cash flow, discounted cash flow analysis will work. But if you're looking at broader, more complex decisions, like an acquisition or a merger, that's the time, I think, that you really do have to bring in integrated business thinking. But I think what a lot of people do is they ignore a lot of the other key business issues. And I think that's why 80 to 85 percent of mergers and acquisitions don't work. They forget to look at the issues associated with human resources and what happens to your culture uh, and the motivation of your stuff. They forget to look at brand and what impact that has uh, on their business and their marketing efforts. They forget to look at information technology and, and how that's going to impact their systems and processes. So I think that's really where we're talking about integrated business thinking and, and probably the most challenging thing for, for students is building enough expertise and experience to make that work. The best and the brightest companies do it well because that's what makes them very, very good and, and top performers. Uh, they, they do acquisitions, they do mergers, they make big decisions, they make big uh, brand uh, calls with integrated thinking. And, you know, uh, I think the key to that in, in many respects is uh, team based analysis, multidisciplinary analysis, because there's no way that anyone sitting at the table has got all the answers. You've got to have different people, different thoughts, different backgrounds and experiences to help you make those calls. I think that's why a lot of business schools are moving towards much more team-based work, uh, because eight brains sitting around the table is always better than one trying to take control of the meeting or the decision-making process. You know, I, I think that a business degree provides all the foundational pieces. What you need is experience in applying those and how to use judgment with those as you move forward. And that only comes with time and experience. And, and you know, as we were talking before, I think one of the most important things is, you know, business and business thinking is all about lifelong learning. You know, when you leave the business school, people shouldn't be thinking, oh, this is it, I'm done. <clears throat> I've got all the skills and knowledge that I need. It really comes from experience and, and I think it's very important for students to understand that you know they need to stay plugged in, they need to network with other professionals through associations, through uh, courses, uh, follow-up courses after your, your business degrees, uh, you know to stay plugged in with uh, uh, associations and, and other networking opportunities is really fundamental because a business problem today and how it might be solved is going to be very different than what the business problem could be in five years and how it could be solved five years from now. I think it is. Uh, you sort of go back to where you're most comfortable uh, and I think that's why a corporation should always push for, for more team-based decision making and, and analytical work uh, because it takes people out of their comfort zone. Uh, the key thing though is, is, is to continue to broaden your experience base and, and take a look for opportunities within organizations or outside organizations that give you experience in you know all the aspects of business whether it's accounting or finance or marketing or human resources or IT and you know that's the key is if you can build those experience bases across your career you're going to be much stronger as you move forward Probably the biggest thing is that there's a huge concentration of international firms in Calgary uh, and expertise. It comes from the U.S., it comes from Europe, it comes from uh, Asia. Uh, and all those companies are, are, are here and work here on a day-to-day on a -day basis. I think the other big one, though, is that the oil and gas industry is extremely capital intensive. 
So the bets we make in this industry and in this city are huge. They're in the multi-billion dollar uh, range. And if you make a bad call, it can, Im <coughs> sorry, it can impact your, your company for 10 or 15 years. So, you know, the capital and the international aspects of it.